I'm the underdog with the heroic card. I'm Aaron Jones Jr. I have to keep pushing for my kids. If I give up, what's that leave them with? Nothing. I have to understand that it's bigger than me. That it's not about me when I wake up and go to work. It's not about me when I'm reading and educate myself. It's not about me when I'm practicing my speeches. It's not about me. It's about my family. Hey, 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 you're now tuned in to Underdog Talk. I'm your host, Eric Jones Jr., the underdog with the heroic heart, and I have conversations with successful underdogs, and today I have Mr. Aaron Green, Mr. Struggle Made Me, Mr. Big Struggle. How's it going, sir? That's good. It's good. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you being on, and before we get into today's conversation, this episode is sponsored by Christian DeWine Clothing Line. That's me and my son's clothing line. Uh, if you use underdog talk, uh, underdog is spelled U N D W A D G, and you'll get 15% off. Uh, we have hoodies, we have t shirts, we have sweaters. So if you uh use that promo code, you will get 15% off. And the one is spelled D E J U A N, just because sometimes it's spelled different. So I got, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna call you Big Struggle because that's what you got on here. So no. we got a big struggle here. So you're the founder of Struggle Made Me and the creator of Struggle University. For sure. Yes, Where sir. Where did the struggle start for you? Uh, just, you know, um, coming up as a uh, I mean, typical statistic, um, projects, single parent home. Uh, my dad went to prison when I was five. Um, that's where it started. You know what I mean? So it started really at, at birth, you know what I mean? My mom was, was struggling. Uh, she had me as a teenager. So, uh, you know, my beginning was with the cards stacked against us. You know, uh, my mom was a single parent of three um, and she made the best out of what she had, worked three jobs um, and just watching her, um, you know, struggle, but still take care of us and make sure we had everything that we wanted. Uh, and then my dad fell struggle to um, fell victim to the system. You know what I mean? And so um, that's where it started. Yeah, I definitely understand. For me, it started at birth, being born with a disability. But then my dad, well, my biological dad passed when I was three because he, uh, he died of cancer. So my mom, she had to basically had raise me and my sister. So seeing her and seeing what I had to go through, the struggle definitely started early. So you got that struggle, your mom raising you, you got your siblings, you living in the hood. What What's going on? What's life like? What do you have to overcome like on an everyday basis? Just, you know, going to school. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, I mean, honestly, just move. We moved so many times uh, living from neighborhood to neighborhood. Um, I went to so many different schools. Um, I think one of my main struggles in school was uh, behavior. You know what I mean? I had teachers who didn't understand me. Um, I couldn't focus, so I became a problem to them. Um, and they didn't really they didn't really take the time to really even help me. Um, and so my mom just, you know, instilled that um, being re relentless. You know what I mean? I, she didn't care. We're going to figure it out. Um, and that's really like every day was just, different like I always had fun my mom had uh, a bunch of friends so we was always at somebody's house chilling kicking it while she went to work it was sometimes where we went to work with her um just because she was trying to figure it out um had an amazing family um so I could say we was in the struggle but it didn't feel like the struggle because my mom made sure that we didn't feel our circumstances mm. yep that's definitely sound like a <clears throat> a black mom back in the day like you ain't really you didn't really understand it until you became an adult and then you understood like bills and all this stuff. You're like, oh, right, we really right. was struggling. I see why we was eating noodles and all this different stuff because of what, you know, you saw your parents uh, do. So as a teacher, I definitely get what you're saying. Some teachers don't sure. get it uh, when kids got a, a struggle in their life, when they, you know, going through stuff, they behavior, they don't, they ain't, they come into a place that's safe. They get to eat, they get to be with their friends. This is their safe place. It's more so of like, all right, this is your safe place, but how can we make education fun for you or where you can learn rather right, than, right. oh, this kid's a problem. And I definitely see it all the time 
being in the school, it's like, no, nah, this kid just really going through something. Like, right. home life is messed up. So when home life is messed up, you got to approach that kid a different way. So For you sure. said you moved around a lot and different things. So being a teenager, did you, were you the, oh, I'm going to play sports, or did you do something else? Yes, yeah, so I was a teenager. So when my dad went to prison, they immediately introduced me to football. Um, by the time I turned a teenager, I started getting really, really good. So I played on the west side for the Northwest Caps, um, the traveling team. So um, we literally was we we was good. We I played against a lot. Well, I played with a lot of great players, and I played against a lot of great players. Um, <clears throat> I went to Christmas Addicts Middle School, sixth grade. Um, we was dogs. Like we had, you know, my best friend Mike Malone. Um, I met him. So the crazy thing is I met him, uh, the week before we started sixth grade. So we played the Northwest caps played Ben Davis. Uh, I think there was a little giants or some junior giants or something. And me and him saw each other in the game and we was going at each other. And then the next day on the bus, we got on there and sat across from each other and was like, hold on. And then ever since then we've been locked in. And so immediately, you know, my, my middle school started, my, it started great. But on top of all of that, um, I was playing sports and doing prison visits. You know what I mean? And so yeah. um, my life looked a lot different than a lot of other people uh, because those were the weekends that I would look forward to. If I wasn't playing football on the weekend, I was going on a prison visit or I was at a friend's house or at the crib chilling with my siblings and my mama. Um, so, yeah, sports was a big, big thing for me as a teenager. Um, went to uh, – so seventh grade year, we started getting really, really good at football. Then eighth grade came, um, and Cathedral had actually came to a game to see somebody else. <clears throat> and my grandfather, my great-grandfather, actually saw them come. My great-grandfather used to pull up to all my games. He would back his PT Cruiser in. He would sit on his car and watch me play. And then after the game, he would give me a hug and give me $5. Um, and that was our regimen my whole life, right? And so he saw Cathedral. And he was like, all right, I'm about to go talk to him. I was having the best game of my life this game. So <laughs> every, the person they was looking for, I was smacking every play. And, you know, he he, he had mentioned my name. And he was like, hey, we want him to come shadow. Um, and so, I, I mean, I always attest um, saving my life really to my great-grandfather just because I knew the road we was going down. You know, we was at Addicts. We had our little gang. Um, and honestly, our gang was just – a bunch of people that came from the same situation. So we stuck together and that's how a lot of gangs start. And that's why I hate how America portrays gangs because honestly, um, outside of the crime and stuff, it starts as something people need because they don't have, right. Um, mm -hmm. and then you end up finding your love or you finding that comfortability within a group of people who look the same as you. And a lot of times, you know, whether it be protection or whatever, it stems into other things, but, we had our little gang, and it was my guys. So, yeah, and then, you know, after that, um, I went to Cathedral, um, and super culture shock. Um, I had just came from um, a predominantly black middle school to going to a predominantly all-white high school. Um, and I was scared, for real, because I didn't know. I'm like, man, I don't know how to talk with them. I don't know how to dress like them. Luckily, we had uniforms, so it was like, all right. So I still got to get my Jordans, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, it was different, man. And, I, you know, I used to, uh, when I first got up there, um, you know, I met some of the guys and some of the guys that were there came from situations like I came from. And so that made it better. But also the other guys on the team, like the white guys, they was they was dope people. You feel what I'm saying? They, they, yeah. they showed love immediately. And my freshman team was so good. It was ridiculous. Like, so we was always together. Um, and, you know, I, I used to hide a lot of my dad being in prison because I was embarrassed. Um, mm -hmm. And so we fast forward to sophomore year. I'm playing varsity. I mean, and I'm playing varsity. Um, I'm starting to feel myself a little bit. Now I know I'm good because I'm at this prestigious high school playing varsity as a sophomore um, and doing prison visits, you know. And then, you know, one day I get a call and they're like, uh, you know, my dad, when he was in prison, he used to say a lot about, like, always getting out, right? And it just used to be annoying because it's like, all right, bro, you ain't never getting out. I don't even know how much time you really got. Um, but one day, my sophomore year, I got off work. He was out sitting in my living room. 
Mm. Yeah, you feel me? And then it was on after that. So as a teenager, I had to deal with a lot of different emotions. Like I was dealing with identity issues because my guys that I came up with is around the corner at Orlington. But yeah. I'm at the school and I know like if I stay around where we where we used to hang around, it could be problems. So I used to I used to be in some dangerous environments on the weekend, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that that was my comfort level. You know, a lot of people look at where we want to be and where we come from as as like, oh, that's terrible. But really, I'm more comfortable in the hood than I ever am in the uh Carmel and Geist and all of that, you know what I mean? So yeah. it ain't as bad as what y'all think or what y'all mm -hmm. portray. This is where family has come from. This is where the struggle lies. Like, this is how we came up. So Dad gets out, um, and now it's different because now I'm going to school and I'm walking different, talking different. You know what I mean? Yeah. My confidence is there. For the first time in my life, I'm whole. I got everything. Yeah. Um, and it was times where I would just be walking like, man, you know, my daddy might not be rich, but he could whoop every daddy at the school. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah. And so, yeah, so back to your, your question is, Sports saved me, you know what I mean? And sports really gave me what my dad wasn't able to, what my mom wasn't able to. It gave me a lot of my foundation. Um, and I'm forever grateful. Yep, I, I, I love it. I love how you broke down your story. And I love what you said about gangs because because <clears throat> I look at it as like people be like the typical gangs, like blood crip. And I'm like, y'all still do that? Like, right, you're right. It's 2022, but the way you broke it down from where, because I'm from Michigan City, um, so I'm from up north. So yeah. people are listening, we're from Indianapolis, and Cathedral is definitely a school. Like, if you're from the hood and you get to go to Cathedral, oh, my nephew about to go there. He, uh, yeah. he going there next year, so I know how, how that feeling is. So uh, back to what you were saying uh, with the gangs, it's like, it's just your bros. It's right. just your people that right. you're cool with. Like, now... You might be in some situations where you gotta bop with some boys. You, yeah. you know, you might just be wrong place, wrong time, party, whatever. And but these are your guys you gonna ride with. Like you gonna That's stay right over their house. If you ain't got it, they got it. If you need to right. wear, wear they shirt today, you gotta wear they shirt. Whatever the case. So it's more of a brotherhood than like a gang. But 100%. from where we from, it's like these are just my bros. But the outside looking in, like oh this, you know, it's like no, it's just like uh. The dudes that play football at a uh, cathedral or yeah, they play yeah, ball, yeah, or yeah. they parents is rich and they hang out. That's your bro. Right. You're gonna do whatever. It might look different, but it's the same thing as this, my bro. So yeah. I definitely love how you broke that down. And then, like you said, the struggle is like what what makes you comfortable. So I was married, right? Yeah. We lived in Avon, but if you go to the left, you're on Tim Street. You go mm -hmm. to the right, you're on Avon. I'm comfortable going to the left. I'm right. comfortable going to the gas station. I'm comfortable right. going over here and kicking with my bros. Like yeah. I ain't comfortable going here. Like I, I might drive down the street, police, woo woo. I right. mean, Hancock County. That's a yeah. whole different ball game. Yeah. And if I go here, and it's like people don't understand. Like you comfortable there, but then when you comfortable there, just like you're doing, you're going back and you're making sure that the kids understand you don't got to do this. Absolutely. You don't got to live like this. You don't got to. Right. Just because your parents made that your option don't mean that got to be your option. Right. So I love that. So you uh, you at Cathedral, you playing football. I know you got to get some college. So how, how does that go? Like your pops is out, life doing good. You smell yeah. yourself, football, y'all killing it. Like how does the rest of the high school career go for you? Um, so even even before high school, bro, I, I struggled with grades. And I never, I never understood it why like i would try to study nothing would stick i would uh i would do everything possible um to pass these tests and i just i couldn't i don't even know how i passed the entrance exam for cathedral you know what i mean and so um it took me being honest it took me six times to pass the driving test to get my permit bro it just was it was awful like yeah. i just yeah. i could not take tests to save my life so my grades always was right above average and that was only because my mama told me you know if your grades ain't right you can't play and i wouldn't jeopardize a plan so yeah, we're gonna make sure we at least get a 2.1 around here um so junior year comes now i'm about to start varsity 100 percent of the time instead of just switching in and out 
Um, so now it's like, all right, it's on now. Now these colleges are going to start looking. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time, a lot of our motivation was like, let's go D1. So we would always talk about being D1 and playing D1. And so, um, you know, my dad's out now. I'm feeling better. My junior year comes. Every weekend I'm with my dad, right? Um, and we did the same thing pretty much every weekend. So, the, um, you know, he had come get me. Then we would pull over in these apartments on Arlington because um, he knew some people in there. And then we would go wherever we was going. We was going to go around the world if we had to. Um, and this one weekend, um, we had pulled over there and we was outside in the car, me and my little brother. And I was like, man, I got a bad feeling about over here. And I don't know what it was. I just was staring at two guys staring at us. And I'm like, man, I don't want to come over here no more. You know what I mean? And so my dad got in the car. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. Old. We got to keep coming over here. So fast forward to that next weekend. Um, it's my weekend again. He's supposed to be coming to get me. So I get off work. Uh, my mom calls and was like, hey, what's your sister's number? My grandma had just dropped me off at the house. So I'm like, why is she asking what's my sister number? Like, that don't make no sense. Um, and so I gave her my sister number, but I could tell something was wrong. So I put the key in the door and I started hearing all these cars pull back up. I'm like, hold on. I must have left something in my grandma's car, but I saw my mom. I saw my uncles. Um, and she had told me my dad got shot. And I was like, all right. You know, I mean, we from neighborhoods, man. Everybody gets shot. You know what I mean? What are we going to the hospital? What are we doing? Um, and she said it was over. And I said, damn. Like, so I didn't believe her. I'm like, well, why would you come tell me this? So she wanted to drop me off at her friend's house. And I was like, no, nah, I ain't going over there. Take me where we going because I still don't believe what you're saying. So we pulled up in them same apartments on Arlington. And and uh, his truck was out there. Um, it was multiple bullet holes in the windshield, uh, the yellow tape. And then I squinted when I got there because people was trying to grab me and hug me. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to touch nobody. And I saw his body still laying there. And so... I instantly get upset because why is he still out here? He had been dead for two, three hours. Why is he still laying on this ground? So um, it still ain't sank in yet. I'm, I'm still struggling with what's going on. I'm really talking to God in my head like, man, what is you doing? How you give me back my, my whole life and then take it away from me? This is crazy. So, um, you know, I deal with that. And then everybody knows after you lose somebody, the hardest time is when you sitting alone with yourself, right? And so. I went through a, a, a depression period. Um, I went to the funeral. Um, and at the funeral, I bro, I was in like a trance, bro, until one moment, like the choir was singing, and then everybody turned around, right? And the whole cathedral football team was there. And so, you know, for me, that uncomfortableness that I felt being at that school was the same uncomfortable feeling they probably felt coming in the middle of the hood to a funeral of a gangster. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and, I, you know, I don't mean to put that label on my daddy, but he was one of them. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He was really one of them. But the greatest dad in the world. You know what I'm saying? And so um, once I saw that, man, it, it, it touched my heart in a different way because I realized, like, it's a lot of people that really, really care about me that don't look like me, right? Yeah. Um, and so life kind of got crazy after that. Football started to be really, really good, man. And, and my grades just failed. I couldn't focus in class, right? And so, um, you know, Cathedral did everything they could to, like, make me feel supported and try to help me. But it wasn't – I didn't know how to communicate my feelings. I really didn't know what I was feeling. Once again, I'm dealing with a huge identity issue because I want to go kill his killer. His killer yeah. was 17, and I'm 17. Yeah. So it's eye for an eye. But at the same time, it's like I'm a football star now, like, yeah. What does that look like? You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't be this. I don't want to be this person that, that life is trying to make me be. Um, and so I battled with that for a long, long time. Um, and then my senior year came um, and my cousins, I used to go to their house all the time because they had triplets. Um, and my cousin had a murder-suicide with him, him and my other cousin killed with him and himself. And so now, like, I'm dealing with that. And the triplets, all I can think about is them because I'm their cousin, but I'm really their big brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I didn't know how to feel. I just wanted to support them, but I'm still grieving. So And, and it felt like every time I would kind of get a little bit towards getting over it, 
something would happen, right? And and it just was ongoing all the time. Something happened. And so at the end of my senior year, um, my grades didn't align with the SAT test scores. And mm-hmm. I was blessed enough to end up getting a scholarship to Miles College, a Division II um, in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and that's where my college journey started. Yep, yep, man. That's that's a heavy, that's a heavy uh high school career to have For to sure. deal with your pops. And then like you saying, like, man, all right, buddy 17, like you, you kill my pops, I'm on your head. Like, mm-hmm. that's like where we from. Like, that's yeah. that's the mentality you got. Like, all right, it's an eye for eye, but then it's like, man, I got football. Then right. then it's like it's almost like the show on American. You, you when you said your homie showed up at the funeral, like exactly. Uh, dang, all right, these are my bros. So yeah. I got to really think about what's, what we got going on over here. So that's good that you was at a school like that. Because if, sure. if you was in the hood, oh, yeah, you would have been like, all right, I need somebody to go get me this, and yeah. I'm about to handle this. And we might not be talking because the situation could have been different. For so sure. that's, a, that's a blessing that you was at that school, even though, like you said, it was struggle taking tests. Like, I, yeah. I definitely understand that. Like, I couldn't even try out for basketball because my grades were so horrible. Yeah, I remember yeah. my mom came to me in 10th grade, like, crying, like, hey, can you at least graduate? Because I was on the wrong path because my grandfather had just died. And that was, like, my homie. That was my best friend. And I was like, yep. man, whatever, skip life. I'm just going to do me. And it was like, she was like, no, I need you to graduate. And yeah. I ended up, I graduated with a 1.7. Like I, I got I got it happen. I did what you said, Mom. I mean, yeah. I, I know the GPA ain't where it's supposed to. I got into one college, so it was it was cool. But it's different when you got to deal with stuff like that. Like you saying, like these cousins, you going over their crib every day, and now they gone. It's like what? Right. Like as a kid, like how do you deal with that? And then it's like, oh, we need you to come come in and talk to this. Talk to who? Why am I talking? Who are you? Right. Yeah. Fed? Like, why am I talking to you? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I don't really talk to people. And it's and it's so crazy. We don't understand that we need to talk to people. Absolutely. 100%. Votes, we understand counseling is good. Like, going to talk to somebody and releasing what you got in you is good. Like, it's okay. I seen the post you said it, it's okay to be okay. I mean, not to be okay. To not be okay. Yeah. Go talk to somebody. Like, yeah, it, sure. it's, it's serious. Or get around people that's winning where you want to be. And they can be real with you. You that's can't have them homies around or them friends around us. Oh, yep, yep. Man, you right about old girl. No, you wrong. You, right. you, you handle that different. I need you to, you need to do this and that. And if you don't have that, somebody to talk to, you need it. Yeah, like, sure. You ain't going to make it in life if you don't have somebody to talk to. Absolutely. You don't have somebody to hold you accountable. That's so you got, you got college. Man, that's, I'm still like, I haven't dealt with the deaf, but I know just being around people like people that have, has dealt with the deaf like that in in high school and then like like somebody you close to as in your age passing away like my little sister her best friend um passed away when she was only nine Mm. in a baseball accident and it was like dang that's her homie right it was like it was different like for her like going forward but and it's like we deal with different stuff like that and then we expected to go to school yeah yeah and 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 the crazy thing is I meant to, and I skipped over, which I apologize, Greg Dad. So three months before my dad got killed, the reason I even was at Cathedral was for my great-grandfather, and he died and he died from um, I think a, a illness. Like, when I pulled up to the hospital, he died, basically. Waited on me to get there, and then he passed away. Um, and that was my best friend. Like, my great-grandfather and me, <laughs> like, yeah. that was my guy. They called me um, his kid, because that's how close we was. And so, like, I lost him three months before my dad on my dad's birthday. Mm. And so, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of weird stuff like that that was happening. It was just like, how am I supposed to even function? Yeah. And a lot of that, those feelings, like you said, you got to talk to somebody because all you do is suppress them to get through. But eventually those feelings start to come back out and they manifest into different problems. And right. so we got to we gotta stay ahead of the game. So um, you know, one thing I, I I I preach to people is just separating trauma, right? And so why I said it is because we have these issues back to back to back to back to back, and we have these feelings that grow: anger, depression. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, if you separate it and take care of it each time. So if you got childhood trauma that's feeding into your adult trauma, 
that all of that is going to seem like one, when really it's totally separate. And a lot of your adult issues, if you can address your, your child trauma, your adult issues might not be as bad. And so you got to kind of separate out, uh, separate it out in yourself. Um, it's a lot of self-reflection that goes to it, but I didn't get to that till after college. You know what I mean? And yeah, so I, I um, definitely understand. Cause I, I was the, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm the same way. Like you, you understand, like it took for me to go to actual counseling to realize it was some childhood trauma that was affecting my adulthood. And it's like, you don't really realize it. Like being in relationships, like when you're in a relationship, you got to know that person, how they was brought up because mm -hmm. we all brought up different. Like my mom loved me, but they, we didn't say I loved you or hugged you or stuff like that. So right. it's like, I know, I know that she loved me because she, my mom and the stuff that she did, but I never heard it. So it's like, I got a kid now. I got to be like, I love you, son. And this and that, mm -hmm. and, or to the sister the same way. And it's like, it's weird to do that, but it's like, it's necessary. And it's like, we got to unlearn what we learn up into a kid. Cause a lot of, so like nowadays, uh, people always into other people's business or in the streets. It's like, if you was in that situation, what would you do? Right. You're not in, in these people's situations. So what would you do? Cause right. somebody else might've been in your situation and, and pop little buddy. Yeah, for sure. Especially for sure. if I'm around the way. Yeah. yeah. They would with a hey yeah you killed my pop 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 yeah right. i'm on your head sure. yep. and so it's like people are in different situations you never know what you would do in those situations but that's why you talk to people like you said it was a murder suicide we don't never know who a per like nobody knew i ever attempted to commit suicide when i was a kid. nobody ever knew like nobody until i became an adult and i started telling them my story yeah. but like life was like hard nobody understood i'm a kid in the hood but I got a disability. I'm totally different than everybody else, but nobody right. sees that because everybody treats me normal. Right. So like, oh yeah, you just got the same. No, I, I trust me. I don't. Right. I don't understand the issues I got. So it is definitely like when you don't have people to talk to, you got to have those friends. And some of those mm -hmm. friends ain't good for you. My yeah, mom, right. like your parents, I'm sure your mom told you, hey, don't hang out with them. And yep. then in life, you realize, hey, oh, you right. I shouldn't have hanged out with Buddy. I'm yep. glad I stopped hanging out with him. Now look at what's going on because right. you 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 got those friendships, but your parents know like no, you can't hang out with them. But it's like this the only friend I got. This right. the only, this the only homie that I can go over his house and his mom know me, or I can get a hot plate over here, or I can stay the night over here. Right. I can go over over there where you want me to go over. They don't like me, so yeah. it's. Is totally different. So not to get off a uh, subject. So you go to college and how does, uh, how do you start struggle made by me? Like, I know it's probably a, a, a different time frame, but how does college end up? And then how do you start with, with the struggle? Yeah. So <clears throat> I got accepted into college, but then I took this test, right? And the test was like, it, it was a mental health test. Kind of like, see what my, if I got a learning disability, so then I ended up realizing that I had I was partial dyslexic and I had ADHD and never mm -hmm. knew it. So a lot of the times when I'm feeling less than um, and feeling like there's really something going on cognitively that I'm, I'm struggling with in school. And I think a lot of times, you know, a lot of doctors will put that on black kids like, oh, yeah, they got ADHD. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but partial dyslexia is literally still seeing things and can't remember, uh, can't really study. So a lot of my problems was that. So but. They had this thing where, since I had these th this learning disability, um, they tried to give me um, like these little um, requirements where I could take a test by myself. So I'm looking at them like, ain't no way y'all about to put me in a room by myself to take a test and I got my phone on me. <laughs> like, y'all tripping. I ain't stupid yeah. now. Uh, yeah. But I turned down all of that because I didn't want to, I ain't need it. I was going to mm -hmm. figure it out. So in college, yeah. um, I went to Miles College. I got a 3.0 every semester. Right. Some started clicking and continual was extremely hard. So a lot of stuff I was dealing with in college, I'm like, oh, this is easy. All I got to do is do my homework. And I had to do that in cathedral. So um, I'm balling in college. I started my freshman year, um, rolled over into my sophomore year, met some great people at Miles. Um, and then um, one of my guys, Maurice Snow, one of my one of my good friends there, um, he was on his way to NFL and uh we had talked. It was a winter break. Uh, we had been talking about like playing D1 because I always wanted to play D1. And we would go back and forth about it. Um, and he had ended up dying in his sleep. 
Mm. Right. On winter break. And so, you know, one of our last conversations that I could remember was talking about playing D1. And I was like, you know what? I want to transfer. And so I transferred to the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Um, and so when you transfer up, so I went from a D2 to a D1, you got to sit out a year. And mm. so I sat out for a whole year. Um, and it was rough. I ain't gonna lie. Like they, but it was the greatest year of my life because I was able to focus on football and the speed of the game changed and just everything was, I got uh, acclimated into um, getting better grades at a, at a university and being at this huge school. And so um, spring ball came and it was time for me to fight for a spot. Well, when it was time for spring break, one of my, man, one of my best friends in the world, his name was uh, Money Mitch. Um, he cut my hair. So that's the first person I go see when I go home. Um, yeah. And I got a call right before I was about to hit the road to Alabama. He got murdered. And right. Yeah. So it's back to back. I can't shake it. Um, and, and all of this played into my mental health of being in the city because I was paranoid. Right. So my spring break, I'm at a, I'm at a funeral for my best friend, one of my best friends. And so being traumatized, I came back. I started in front of 110,000 people at Ohio State. Um, that was one of the pinnacles of my life. Like now, because because me and Mitch had this thing where if I ever went to the NFL, he was going to be the barber. So we was going to travel around. We was going to get this money. Um, and so at Ohio State in the third quarter, I got pushed in the back after a play, landed on my kneecap and something tore. And I knew it was over, right? So I go to the sideline. Um, and my replacement go in and he get hurt. I'm like, damn, they whooping our ass out here. What is going on? So I put my helmet back on and played on one leg. And I played the rest of that season hurt because there was no way I went through all of this just not to play. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my mama, me and her going back and forth about staying there. We struggled financially. Like, you know, my grandfather. So my great-grandfather had died, but his son, my, my grandfather, my guy, um, he used to send me like $25 a week. My mama used to send me what she could, you know, and I'm all the way out here. It was hard, you know what I mean? And so, um, but I got my scholarship after that season. And so now I got a little money about myself. They, I'm living in a house off campus. We doing it big. Um, so I played my senior year. Um, Gray's still good, but in the seventh game, my knee just wasn't getting better. Um, and so um, after my seven year, I'm like, man, it's over for me. But I got in the gym. Like I was about to get this knee right. And then the coach called. So they gave me a chance to try out. I had an amazing tryout, but was still injured. So football was over. I got a second opinion. It was like, you ain't going to be able to walk if you keep going. And that's when I walked away, right? Yes. Um, and so um, I graduated. Uh, you know, I gave my diploma to my mama because I did that for her. Um, school mm -hmm. really I hated school. Yeah. Um, but during that depression, I'm like, man, everything, one thing that's been consistent in my life is football, and now that's over, but struggle, right? And every time I struggled, I found a way to turn it into some motivation and go forward and figure it out, right? Um, I could have tried to go, I tried to find my dad's killer. Um, I try, I could have tried to find Mitch's killer, right? Um, and, and do whatever it was going to do, but... I chose the harder route and, and, and stayed focused because I knew for a fact that I didn't want to go to prison like my dad and Mitch would have been pissed off if I would have went and killed somebody and went to prison for the rest of my, or got killed. Um, so everything I did was in their name. Right. Um, and so I created struggle made me. Um, and I used to make these little terms just to keep myself focused. So um, haters is motivation was first. And then league bound was second. And then struggle made me was the last one. And I've been running with that. Um, and so I, I had uh, my brother, Sean O, uh, a tattoo artist and an artist. I was like, man, make me a logo. He put the boot on the shirt. Uh, well, he put the boot, he created the boot. And I put him on the shirt and sold out in like two hours. And then I was like, all right. So I flipped the money. I always been a hustler my whole life. Cathedral yeah. I sold. DVDs and candy <laughs> I on the canal. I um, bro, I always was a hustler. I told my dad when I was young, I would never sell dope and I didn't. And yeah. so I found other ways. I used to shoot dice all the time. So yeah. when I ain't had no money, I used to come home with bankrolls. Um, and so it was like, all right, this is it. So I, I put it on a sweatsuit and wore the sweatsuit out. 
and I probably had like 70 orders. So I ordered like 50 sweatsuits um, and it came in and they sold out in like four hours. And then after that, it's just been wildfire. And I always been a relationship person. So like, I mean, I got, you know, celebrities in my clothes. My best friend is in the NFL. So I was, I was always sending him stuff and he would get it to some of his teammates. Um, and struggle made me just been something because I love doing motivational speaking. It was clothing that could speak to people when I couldn't. Mm. It was important for me because I want to always encourage people to keep going. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I love it, man. I love it. That's like, it's crazy. You keep getting these, you know, you had to go through several people dying. Like I have, I've been fortunate enough to not have people like close to me, close to me pass away yeah. uh, like that, except for my grandfather. And then my grandma, when she passed away, but I was kind of like older and I could kind of handle those situations, but like the struggle. Yeah. Like people don't get it. Like it really made me like, going to play, like, people was trying to make a basketball team. I was just trying to be able to play on the basketball court outside. Oh, sure. So it was like, if I didn't go and work on my game or work on me, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And now it's like, I'm able to do anything because I'm able yeah. to, you're able to turn that struggle in one area. It's like, okay, I know this going a challenge is going to happen here. And now you have been through way worse. Now yeah. it's like, oh, this this easy. This ain't nothing. I had to go through way worse. It's kind of like what you said. You was like, Khadija was hard. You got to college. Like, oh, this ain't nothing. This, this sure. is crazy. And yeah. sometimes people don't realize the hard shit that we go through in the beginning is what's gonna get you through at the at the towards the end and towards the middle because you already went through all the hardest stuff you had to go through. Right, right. Like when, when and that builds the character who you are. And I love what you do with uh the kids because I had a mentor program, it was called Young Kings. Because okay. I was coaching and it was like a player on my team, he's one of the better players, and his mom was like, Hey, his grades, he acting up. His mom and dad come. So I, you know, I'm like, all right, you can't play, you gotta do this. I discipline him. So they bring another parent from another team and yeah. another parent. So I'm like, all right, cool. And our our team name was Kings. So I was like, let's, I'm going to name it Young Kings. So I had that and I like Go seen it change. And it's crazy because like a lot of the kids, like the program kind of stopped uh, due to COVID. Yeah. But a lot of the kids, it's a kid locked up because he, uh, he shot and killed somebody. Uh-huh. Another kid, he out, he possibly could do some time. Like a couple of things happened to kids and I'm like, man, I should have kept that program going like and you understand like the importance that you have on a kid's life because they ain't going to make those dumb decisions because I come at kids real. I come I talk to kids how they talk to each other. 100 percent. And then they'll look at me like, really? Yeah, that's how y'all talk to each other. So I'm going to holler at you just like that because you're going to understand me. and You're going to see that I care like kids. I work at a school. They be joking. All right, let's joke. <laughs> let's. Uh, right. Yeah. I'm right with it. And yeah, they be I on like, their ass. I don't play them type of games. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> they be like, Mr. Jones will roast you. Yeah, yeah. I throw a wheel. Don't try try me if you want to. And right. then even with basketball, kids come up. Oh, you can't hoop. All right, come on. Let me let me show you something real quick. Right, for sure. Yeah. Now the kid's like, oh, yeah, he can shoot. Oh, yeah, he can joke. Now they respect me. But now it's like, if I see him messing up, hey, let me holler at you. Yep. Like, I can talk to him because they Absolutely. know I'm cool. They know, all right, he looking out for me. He not coming right. at me, like, talking down to me. Because I learned my first lesson, one of my first lessons, uh, speaking, I was out east. And I assumed these kids was a certain way. And when I tell you these kids ate me up, and I sat there and was like, never again. I right. never, right. never talked down. Like, I came at them the wrong way. And it was like. Oh, I get it. And I see why kids don't talk to adults because yeah. if you come at them that way. So how long uh, how long have you been doing uh, like the mentoring and in the schools and stuff like that, the programs yeah. with, the, with the boys? So um, I actually started. Um, so after football and everything was over, um, I started working at DCS. Um, I worked there for eight months, um, made an impact learned a lot, but I wanted to be more hands-on with the families. Um, I wanted to have a part in their success by just pouring positivity into them. Um, And so um, for the last eight years, I've been working with system impacting youth and families. Um, And one thing that I learned, and and it's crazy because I learned so much from them. Um, A lot of my families have helped me heal because we've talked They've shared their experiences. We've created safe spaces. Um, and 
just getting to know these folks. And these is my family members. Now, once I get you on my caseload, this ain't no job for me. Like I do this for, for, for real life. So we family, anybody I come in contact with, I always try to leave an everlasting impact on. Um, and so for the last eight years, I've been servicing youth and families, um, primarily youth, um, and just learning, learning so much. And, you know, it's always they talk about like what I've done for kids, but I don't think I could put in words what they've done for me. Um, and, and, and it's special, man. I really, really, really love these kids. And so a lot of times people don't even know, like I'm really hurting as I'm doing this work because I've lost so many kids. Uh, one of my, one of my closest kids is fighting for his life right now. They trying to give him a hundred years. I talk to him every day. I let him talk to the kids that I'm servicing because regardless of what happens, you're still a human. You're still my little brother and your story, your story can save somebody. And I always put him on the phone and let him just tell the real. Um, I got other kids that I'm still connected to. Um, and I always, you know, I tell the success stories, but I always, I always tell about the kids that I've lost. And, you know, what? one thing people got to understand about mentoring is that we get a small portion of these kids' lives to impact. If you can do that, you have won. You have done, you have done your duty, what you were supposed to do. If something happens... That, that it'd be out of our control. And so a lot of times when I, I had lost during COVID, I had lost like 10, mm. five to like the system and five to gun violence. And it was, and it destroyed me. Like my heart is still broken because you know, you, and you know, working with kids, once they, yo, once they, your friend, they, your forever friend. Like you yeah. that, that I, I can always call my kids and get on them. And they, and they know it comes from a place of love because we done, we done did all that. Like it was times where, you know, I would meet a kid and she, he'd be ready to fight. I'm like, shit, let's fight. And we'd square up and everything. But once he realized I was serious, yeah, he was like, all right, hold on. All right, Mr. Aaron, let's talk this out. Yeah. Once that moment comes, that's how you get that breakthrough because they're so used to men leaving their life or men being there for a little period of time and just leaving them. Me, I'm consistent. I'm going to come get you. I'm going, we're going to talk it out. We're going to talk about everything under the sun. Um, and I'm going to help you navigate your journey. Um, and so um, I just wanted to be that person that when you do got that pistol and you walking around because you got to survive before you use it, you at least let you at least think about me and what we talked about and not be so impulsive and try to walk away, but still protect yourself if you got to, because I ain't going to never tell no kid. And this is what I told the New York times is, it's like, do you tell these kids to put guns down? I said, why the hell would I do that? Yeah. Hey, not that day he don't carry his gun is the day he died. So yeah. absolutely not. What I do is train his mind to see there are certain things that you can do before you got to use that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's the win, man. I, I Little wins. When I'm getting calls like, uh, AG, man, I, I just had my first baby. I just got a job. It was wins for me because I know we done talked through what this is going to look like. So I created Struggle University. Um, and, and the reason I created it is because a lot of the life skills and stuff that I learned came after I went through my, my most traumatic moments. So yes. I needed, I needed a me. So I became who I needed because now let's train before we go through these hard moments. So when you're going through it, you've already got your mind fixed around your reaction. You already know that you, this is how I'm going to feel, or this may, I, I mean, you can't really train for like exactly what it's going to be, but yeah. you can learn how to communicate. Okay. I need help. I'm going through this traumatic moment. I may need some therapy. I may need some counseling. Please call this, this, and this. You know where your safe space is. And so now you don't have to lash out. You know what I mean? You already prepared because life is a roller coaster. It's going to happen. Yep. And the thing that we can do to prepare is just keep strengthening our minds. We always talk about going to the gym to get stronger, but the most important muscle up here. Yep. And, and you know, we so, so that emotional intelligence is is key out here because life is uncontrollable. You know what I mean? It's, it's the, 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 the powers that be is going to make sure it's harder on us. So how we fight back is make sure we prepare for however hard it's going to be. Yep. I, I, I love that. <clears throat> and I love what you said. Like when you're talking to kids, like it does suck when, when you hear about a kid going like, dang, they, they did what? So I got a buddy, um, he was like my little bro. I met him through somebody else. Like when I first 
uh, got with my um, son's mom, mm-hmm. and he ended up going to jail. So I remember, I remember the day uh, like it was yesterday. He had called, but I was fixing the car and my phone, so I happened to fall in the snow. So I call him back, go to the voicemail. He called me the next day, like, bro, I might never see you again. I'm like, what? I'm like, and he told me, and till recently, because I got a new uh, new number, like I gave it to his sister to get him. You know, you know how it is when you got to get yeah. the number, but. I always talk to him like he can call like it's it like it sucks that you can't call that person like you right. he'd be like all right man I call you on Friday man that right. Friday it turned to three months for sure Four months. but it's like just to talk to he be you know he'll ask me about certain people and it's like dang he still remember this person he'd be like man it seemed like it's going fast I'm like bro like my son was a baby like yeah. like in in the uh in the um car seat like yeah. little baby. Right. Now this man is eight playing AAU basketball. Like, bro, time ain't time ain't went quick, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's one person when he get out. I'm definitely like any kid. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have him talk to him because it was a moment that I told him I was like, man, if I would have answered my phone or I would have been around you, I'd have rather you, me and you fight than what than you go make that dumb decision. Sure. The person he was around didn't help him make the right decision. Oh, hey, you could we could have threw hands, you could have won, but you would have been out. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you gotta you gotta be that person to to the youth. You gotta yeah. like you hey what oh you want to square up what's good. Right. Like what what's what's cracking and then they realize like all right let me calm down and let me talk to this person because sometimes uh you just yelling at a kid and all that like i see a lot of teachers that yell at kids it's like you know that don't bother them right they oh, deal right. with home. they used to get yelled at everybody yeah. yells at them especially if you're a woman oh they mama yelling at them at home i just look at them like you know that was dumb right i'll be like hey you like getting in trouble no then why you keep doing this dumb stuff like right. explain to me why like you know if you do this because the your teacher they gonna get on your head yeah, yeah, you're right. And it's like, come on, let's make better decisions. And that's really what you're doing is helping kids make better decisions and not putting themselves in bad situations. Because a lot of times, because our environment, we put ourselves in bad situations. Or like a lot of kids, they rap. Everybody got a trap. Everybody got to shoot. Everybody got like, can you do something else? Like, right. can you please? Like, I got a kid, a young kid. He rap. I'm like, all right, what we'll make you different? Right, versatile. Okay, then stop talking about the same shit everybody else talking about. Because sure. you're not versatile. For sure. Like, if you, want, <laughs> if you want a lot of people to listen. You really got to be. You got to do something different. You can't you do something different. About gang bang boop. Bop. No, that's boring. Everybody yeah. talk about that. Talk about yeah. something different. And I love like the university, like because everybody got like a university and that that fit. I love the logo. I, I see. Yeah, the, I appreciate the, it, bro. Coming out and it's like. It fit when I seen. I don't know. I think I seen you on through Desmond thing because you was a uh, at the first men of men in black get, game. Yeah, like, the men in black game. Like, yeah, and I was like, man, buddy. Okay, I like what he's doing. And then I seen underdog because I'm an underdog. Like that's sure. who I am, and that's what the show is about having people on and talk about you know like the struggle. Like for yeah. you got a struggle for real, for real. Yeah. Like um, I appreciate what you do with the youth. And I think I, I, I got to have you on for a part two so we can kind of really have that conversation between Absolutely. two men that actually work in the trenches. For sure. It's different when you work, like it's different working with youth, but when you work in, with youth in the trenches, they got to deal with real life shit where yeah. they could go to school and might, might not make it home. Yeah, It's a different kind of conversation. But I always ask my guests to give three tips. I need three tips for people that's, going through a struggle right now it might not be somebody got killed it might not be it could be they lost their job it's their kid acting the fool what can they do right now when they hear this episode okay so uh three tips um number one find your safe space uh so you can decompress life is gonna life find somewhere where you can go where you can get back to who you're supposed to be that's number one number two trust the process life is gonna life Trust that everything that you're going to go through is going to help you succeed. Um, And everything is like a test, right? Um, Number three, love is more important than any other emotion. So love a little more. Um, Even when people seem to be hating, love a little more. Love on yourself. That's key. If you can love on yourself, it's going to show other people how to love on you. Uh, And that's my three, man. Let's get it.
Yeah, I, I love those. I love those. Definitely got to love on yourself. Like, if you don't love, like, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what situation, no matter what, if you love on you, you'll get through that. And that's, that's how true. I'm sure you got through that. And that's how I got through that. Like, loving on myself and understanding, like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I had to go through. But it ain't going to stop me from being who I am. I need a quote from you. I don't know if it's your quote, a quote you've seen today, whatever. But I need a quote. A quote. Ooh. I give you the struggle made me quote. You are stronger than what you go through. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You definitely stronger than what you go through. So let everybody know how they can reach you on social media and how they can, you know, get in touch with you. All right. Big struggle. Uh struggle made AG on Instagram. Struggle University 2022 on Instagram. Uh struggle made me on Instagram. That's the clothing. Um, Aaron Green on Facebook. Anywhere you put big struggle, struggle made me, you're going to find me. I ain't hard to find them out in the trenches. Yep. Now they can Google you, and it's all good when they Google yes, you. Sir. I understand. So thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate okay. everything you did. Uh, like it. I said, I want to I want to get you on because I want to – I like to hear people's story. I like to, you know, get to know people, but I definitely want to have you on to have, like, a different kind of – like a conversation where we can really talk to – it could be for the youth. Um yes, so I like I always like to give my flowers to to my guests. Like everything that you do is like is is what the kids need, man. Appreciate like it. you need somebody that's from the trenches, that's from the struggle to help them get out the struggle. So thank you for sure. everything that you do. And uh, any closing words? Hey, I just became who I needed to be. Who I needed. When, oh, let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I became who I needed when I was seventeen. Boom! I love it. And on that note, peace, one love.